Julian Callo, Chief European Economist for Barclays Capital here in London. So Julian, do you agree that Europe is uh, probably, uh, or that Europe may be looking at more a double dip than the US would be? I, I think that's probably true still. Uh, because I think in Europe you are going to be seeing some very significant fiscal tightening. That's baked in the cake. Uh, the U.S. always still does have the option to postpone the inevitable fiscal tightening. It is going to have to tighten at some stage, but it's still possible it, it could actually uh, delay that. Whereas in Europe, uh, governments in southern Europe in particular just have no option uh, but to tighten up fiscally. Uh, and Europe also suffers uh, from having less strong productivity growth intrinsically uh, and also the demographics are less favourable uh, for Europe. So, so these are the reasons why Europe is at slightly uh, greater risk of a double dip, particularly if you look at the trend GDP growth rate, it is weaker uh, than that in the United States. So inevitably, statistically, you're more likely to hit zero or below uh, in the case of Europe. Now, with regard to the U.S. economy, what is your assessment of what's going on at the moment? So we heard Manis uh, referring to the deflationary pressures at work there. Are you concerned about deflation? Well, I think it's hard to be so concerned about deflation when you are seeing still strong readings coming through in the commodity uh, market. Certainly, if you look at many emerging economies and you look at food prices, I think you're seeing some uh, very significant inflation pressures coming through right now. As well, I think one factor that will be tending to support inflation uh, will be increased government charges, administered prices and indirect taxes, things like uh, that. At the same time, there's a lot lot of slack around in the United States and in Europe. Uh, you see that with the very high unemployment rates. The unemployment rates are virtually the same really in the US uh, and in Europe and they're not really coming down much at this stage. So if the economy does then slow down very sharply from here, that could push unemployment up and that would have the consequence of putting a lot more downwards pressure uh, on inflation that's already extremely low. So, you know, we can't escape uh, the risk that uh, there is deflation uh, out there. But, but central banks have been having uh, a very expansionary monetary policy. I think they are prepared, even for the ECB and particularly the Fed, uh, to expand their asset purchase programs once again uh, right. if they consider their deflation risks. Now, you talk about jobs being the key here and unemployment mm -hmm. being high uh, in both the Europe and both in Europe and the US. Uh, but we're seeing companies reporting some pretty healthy profits. How are they able to do that in these uh, pretty sick economies still? Mm. Well, I think, of, of course, the, the first thing is to say that large companies have really kept a, a big focus on cost containment, and, and that has been very helpful for their profits. But, you, you know, it does go beyond that, because if you look at the United States, if you look at Europe, uh, you find that factory orders have been rising very significantly. If you look at global business confidence readings or confidence readings in the US or in Europe, th these are actually uh, really been quite elevated. Uh, so it's more uh, than just cost containment. Uh, there has been uh, some improvement in revenues as well that's coming through. And that has been, combination of those factors really has been supporting profits. And, you know, th that is good news because it's clear even for the United States and particularly for yeah. Europe, there's got to have to be fiscal tightening. Uh, and so you really have to rely on the corporate sector here. I don't think the household sector can do a lot. You have to rely on the corporate sector to generate the upswing. Got it. Julian Callow, Chief European Economist at Barclays Capital, thanks so much for joining us.